What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. If there's one thing that I've said on the channel time and time again, it's that sneakers are art, and that every one of these shoes that we take a look at here are a canvas, and the collaborators, the artists, or even the designers themselves at the brands had the opportunity to use that canvas to create whatever picture or create whatever story they feel is near and dear to their heart. But it's not often that one of these collaborations is done with an actual renowned artist. Today we are taking a look at a collaboration Air Jordan 2 that has been one of my most highly anticipated Jordan 2s all year long. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is ladies and gentlemen, this is the Air Jordan 2 by Nina Chanel Abney. First things first, before we even talk about the shoe, before we get into everything, women are getting heat in 2022. Like, I don't know who turned it up over there at the brand for 2022, but women have been getting some of the best drops and there's so many other amazing drops that are to come. We just got news of the Ama Minier Air Jordan 12, women's exclusive. The Air Jordan 5 Gore-Tex, women's exclusive. The Bethy's Beauty Supply Air Jordan 7, women's exclusive. There's so many incredible women's exclusives that are coming out this year and this is another one to add to the bunch. I'm telling y'all, top 10 of the year for me. I know y'all have a lot to say about this. So do I. Before we get into the shoe, we gotta get back into the packaging. All right, Nina Chanel Abney. Who is she? Why does she matter? Well, as I mentioned, Nina Chanel Abney is a world-renowned artist, and I do mean world-renowned. Her works have been in different museums all over the country, all over the world, since as far back as 2007. She's been doing art for as long as she can remember. She's from the Chicago area, which is a dream come true in her own words, as she was able to work with Jordan Brand on her own collaboration. But obviously, her style of art is very different. She calls her art colorfully seductive or deceptively simple investigation of contemporary cultural issues. That's a mouthful. Basically what that means is that her art traditionally takes anything that's going on in the world, especially if she's going to work on a project specifically in a certain city, anything that's going on, be it race related, religion related, police related, whatever it is, she'll actually create her art around whatever social or socioeconomic climate is wherever she's creating the art. She doesn't actually sketch any of her art out. All of her art is truly made from within her. Whenever she starts sketching, she says she feels uneasy about the art that she makes because she doesn't even know where it's about to go. She just lets herself go wherever it goes. She does a lot of spray paint. She does a lot of different types of painting. But the way that she makes her figures is very intentional. She says she makes her figures through anonymity, using things like layers and, and cubism and things like that. She uses these weird kind of obscure, kind of abstract looking characters to create these anonymous faces that make you look more at the subject matter within the painting and not the subject itself. That being said, her work as an artist has reached very far, very wide. You want to talk about how valuable her art is? She was one of the first 10 artists that was featured in the inaugural Christie's 21st Century Evening Sale where her photo that was featured there that featured two black cops actually arresting a white person sold for $990 thousand dollars. She's a big deal. Not only that, but Nina Chanel is also just getting into the NFT space as well, where she's selling certain art pieces through NFTs. That's really enterprising. It's something dope that she's really looking forward to as well. And as I mentioned, her growing up in Chicago came full circle when she was tapped by Jordan Brand to do a special collaborative Air Jordan 2. As we all know, 2022 has been the year of Air Jordan 2 and specifically Air Jordan 2 collaborations. We all know that this is leading up to the OG Air Jordan 2 Chicago that's supposed to be dropping sometime later this year, I think, in the holiday season, but we've seen some incredible Air Jordan 2 projects, but this one, honestly, is kind of at the top of my list. I mean, she did the cover art for Expensive Pain by Meek Mill. That cover art, that is exactly what she wanted to represent with the type of art that she did. The way that it kind of uses layers in that abstract kind of painting to paint a picture that talks about kind of where we are in society or kind of what Meek Mill was experiencing in his life, the Expensive Pain album, that's how she creates her art. I am personally a huge fan of that. But with that history, with the way that she makes her art, kind of getting a little bit of an idea about how she does what she does, it brings us back to the box of the Air Jordan 2. Now, this box is actually really dope. First thing I wanna mention, is the overlay on this box. It doesn't feel like a regular cardboard box. It actually has like a matte finish to it, which I found really interesting. It almost feels like a painting. We'll get into that a little bit more. But on the lid of the box here is the main 
piece of this sneaker, the theme of this sneaker. It's Michael Jordan. If you guys remember this iconic photo, this is Byron Scott here, and this is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar here. Michael Jordan, of course, in the Air Jordan 2s, shooting that shot over both of those Lakers. Now, I want you guys to pay close attention to the way that Jordan 2s look on Michael Jordan's feet in this photo, because this is truly art come to life. The rest of the box is really dope as well. Nina Chanel Abney on the side, Air Jordan and the Jumpman on the back and on the sides of the box here. You open up the lid on the box here, you actually have the confetti, which is the same kind of confetti on the inside of the box, on the inside of the lid as well. Nina Chanel Abney with the Jumpman on the inside of the lid. They went crazy with the packaging. Custom paper as well with the Jumpman logo. So if you guys can see that, if you notice, she actually was able to redo the Jumpman logo itself in her own style of art. So even the Jumpman logo has been kind of freaked a little bit. It's been kind of remixed a little bit and I like that. All right. Let's get to the shoe. All right, starting with the upper of the shoe here, I know you guys have called these sneakers everything under the sun. From boneless Air Jordan 2s to the weirdest shaped Air Jordan 2s to some of the ugliest Jordan 2s y'all have ever seen before. We're gonna get into all of that scrutiny in just a little bit. But what we have here is a simplistic take on the Air Jordan 2, totally deconstructed and then reconstructed within the artistic voice of Nina Chanel Abney herself. She wanted to create a sneaker that she said you could wear up or down. A sneaker that you could wear with a suit, a sneaker that you could wear with jeans, or however you wanted to wear it. Ambiguous, just like her art. So with that, you have this really clean white leather here, but the leather is actually good quality. I like the quality of the leather. This shoe is premium and it better be premium for $250 but they really did come through as far as the materials go. Now you still have the white reptilian print here in that kind of leather as well. A little harder leather, almost a little more plasticky feeling leather in the quarter panel of the shoe as well for the reptilian but again it feels just like Air Jordan 2 that reptilian skin leather as well so nothing different there. You have that big pop of red, that abstract pop of red moving around the lateral to the medial side of the shoe wrapping around the heel. Taking a top down look at the shoe, very simplistic, very abstract and artistic view of the Air Jordan 2. Very nice leather in the toe box here. But again, you see the holes here on the toe box shaped a little bit differently than you would come to expect from an Air Jordan 2, but I like it. Not to mention, I like that suede that goes around the toe box of that shoe as well. Again, very premium. You got two choice of laces with these. You got the black wax laces and then you have this cream colored white lace as well that kind of goes with that sail colored midsole. Really, really nice. Now when it comes to the black laces, in my opinion, you got to do the black laces with these. It's just right for a Chicago colorway Air Jordan 2. We did the black laces with the off whites. Again, I have the 2016 Air Jordan 2 lows, black laces in those. You got to do the black laces. That's just me. Little bit of reptile skin on the tongue of the shoe with the red Air Jordan wings logo. The back of the tongue is so dark. Dope, but it would be really hard for me to show you guys what it looks like but there's a red tag behind there with the 23 in that same Nina Chanel Abney kind of artistic font that kind of abstract looking font here I'll find a photo of it I'll put it right up there so you guys can see it but really really dope on the back of the tongue as well also premium black leather behind the tongue of the shoe as well really really nice touch now the inside of the shoe it's a little bit stiff now you tend to see that with the higher quality leathers but with this I'm not sure exactly what kind of leather this is inside of the shoe but it is kind of stiff it might you might have to work your foot in there a little bit to break the shoe in but I feel like once you break it in it's gonna be really dope. Moving around to the heel of the shoe you got more of that nappy suede with this really nice Nike emblem here kind of looks drawn on again very Nina Chanel Abney very artistic. Sail colored midsole with that really nice Air Jordan 2 outsole. As far as the insole of the shoe again high quality insole here feels like leather on the insole it's slick it's not what you would expect it's not that regular cotton lined insole here it's really nice but you also got the Nina Chanel Abney insignia on the heel of this one, jump man in black on the heel of the other insole. With that being said, there's one more small part of the shoe that we gotta talk about, and it's probably my favorite part of the shoe, and it is the hang tag, the big, solid, metal, art hang tag. When we first saw those photos from those early leakers overseas, this is what got me. This piece is what got me here because I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that actually a framed mini Nina Chanel Abney art piece? Are you serious? Not only that, but a lot of people thought that it was made out of plastic, that it was gonna be cheap, but they didn't go cheap with this one. This is solid metal here. This is very solid metal here. Not only that, but it's stamped on the back with the Jumpman and the Nina Chanel Abney on the back, y'all. This right here, 
literally art. Right, I don't know where we hang this or what we do with this, but we got to do something special with this because you literally are getting a mini Nina Chanel Abney art piece with every pair of these sneakers. Y'all listen, if that's not worth $250, this entire sneaker, the packaging, and this... I really don't know what is. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Nina Chanel Abney Air Jordan 2. Now, here's the thing. The title, once again, like always, was not clickbait. I truly do think that this is one of the best sneakers of 2022, and here's why. Twitter exploded when these sneakers were coming out. People called them everything under the sun, from one of the most beautiful Air Jordan 2s they've ever seen before to one of the ugliest Air Jordan 2s they've ever seen before. Some people said that these are horrendous. Some people said they didn't even want these to go on their feet. They wanted to put them on display. Some people are huge fans of Nina Chanel Abney. Some people could care less about who Nina Chanel Abney is and her art. I try my best to at least introduce you guys to these artists and these collaborators so that you guys can have a full view of why these sneakers mean what they do. And then at the end of the day, it's up to you guys to decide whether this sneaker just isn't for you or if through the shoe itself and the artist itself, the collaboration itself, it is something for you. And I can't tell you guys whether or not this shoe was dope. All I can say is that for me, this shoe number one is super dope, number two, totally worth the price, and number three, one of the most polarizing sneakers of 2022. We're in this weird space right now in sneakers where some people actually care about the shoe itself. Other people could really care less about the story. They could care less about the inspiration. They could care less about the hang tag and the accessories. They could care less about the box. All they want to know is number one, how much money is it going to make me on the resale market? And number two, is this something that I can actually wear? Well, the thing about it is there was just enough hate on this shoe to drive down resale value. Now, it seems like the low top version of these might have been a little bit better, that white and green. It's a good looking colorway, but for me, somebody that's more partial to the Chicago colors, the reds and the blacks. This one was more so for me. But whichever one was your favorite, you can count up down below. Let me know which one your favorite was. Somebody had something to say about this shoe. That to me means that the sneaker won. Art is all about interpretation, especially somebody like Nina Chanel Abney, who purposely makes her art very ambiguous so that no two people see the same thing when they're looking at a piece of her art. Sure, generally we know what this is supposed to be. We know that it's supposed to be an abstract take at the Air Jordan 2 Classic Chicago colorway, similar to the one that Michael Jordan had on his feet back when the sneaker first debuted. We got that part. But on top of that, it's more than that for so many other people. I don't think I've seen so many people be so polarized over a sneaker and dialogue so much over a sneaker. It's almost like people actually had to rely on their own individuality because there was no one person at the apex of sneakerdom that was saying that this shoe was the one to get. There were so many people that actually had voices of influence out there that were on both sides of the spectrum that a lot of people didn't know which way to turn. This person said, to buy the shoe when it was dope. But this other person I follow said that the shoe is trash and it's ugly. I don't know what to do. And so what ended up happening was that the resale market fell, but it actually made the sneaker very accessible for the people that wanted it. Now listen, I hear y'all about the $250 price tag, but listen y'all, Number one, there's a lot of worse sneakers that we've been paying a lot of money for. You can literally either buy one of the best collaborations of 2022, or you can pay resale for a pair of Nike Panda Dunk Lows with that terrible leather on them, and you can probably pay just about the exact same price. If I'm paying the same price for a pair of Panda Dunks on StockX that I'm paying retail price for a pair of these, give me Nina Chanel all day. I like these sneakers. I like what these sneakers represent to sneaker culture. It represents individuality. It represents art. It represents being subjective and one thing being able to be interpreted as different things for different people. That's what makes sneakers beautiful. Guys, I'm tired of going to sneaker cons and seeing the exact same sneakers on every single table in the entire building. What happened to individuality and variety in sneakers? There's nothing wrong with liking something that somebody else said that they don't like. That's what made sneakers hot in the first place was because everybody was doing their own thing and they were wearing their own shoes and they were uncovering these hidden grails and these really dope silhouettes. And somehow along the way, when money got involved, the resale got involved and, and the need for acceptance got involved and conformity got involved, everybody ended up wanting to wear the same thing and be the same person. And, I don't know y'all, like that's not what makes sneakers fun to me. This is what makes sneakers fun to me. The dialogue and the arguing and the debates around these sneakers is what made it fun to me because at the end of the day, 
That's what art is supposed to be. It's supposed to spark dialogue and emotion, and that's exactly what Nina Chanel Abney did with this shoe. This shoe can be anything that you want it to be. Her apparel can be anything that you want it to be. It also was designed to be a bit ambiguous for you to be able to dress it up, dress it down, freak it however you want to freak it. The jersey, the reversible jersey, really dope. The hoodies that came with this collection, I got one of them. Probably one of the best hoodies I've seen at a Jordan brand in a very, very long time. I don't want to draw it on and on about this, but I was super excited for this sneaker to come out, guys. This is really one of the special ones here. If you were able to pick up a pair, congratulations. You probably were able to get them for retail price if you were able to grab them. If you're still looking for a pair, I know it's a little bit tougher in the bigger sizes, but keep hope alive because I got a feeling that the prices may even drop a little bit more. But make no mistake about it, whether you liked the shoe or you hated the shoe, you talked about the shoe. And either way, the mission was accomplished for Nina Chanel Abney. These were art and they created dialogue. Well done. All right, guys, that's pretty much all that I got to say about these. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the Nina Chanel Abney Air Jordan 2. Were these on your must comp list? Were these ones that you guys were able to pick up? Are you still hunting for a pair? Or are you just hard passing it all together? Sound off down below. Let me know. Of course, right down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sticker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Nina Chanel Abney Air Jordan 2. And until next time, I'm out.